in the financial crisis, Europe is leading the way towards a global solution. Et début septembre, président des États-Unis et l'Europe ont donc proposé plusieurs sommets à partir de la mi-novembre qui porteront sur une nouvelle régulation, une nouvelle gouvernance mondiale. Today, Europe can propose the principles and rules that will shape a new global order. Je veux dire ma conviction que la crise appelle à la réforme des institutions européennes. La crise appelle à ce que l'Europe puisse apporter une réponse aussi puissante et aussi rapide que tel autre ensemble mondial comme les états unis ont pu le faire face au drame qu'a représenté la crise financière. Kind of occasion where the crisis calls into question old certainties and minds are more open to change. These are very special moments. Things. France intends to pursue together with all people of goodwill around the world this battle to build a new world order of the 21st century. that we had that 320 uh, meeting in Washington that started uh, uh, this effort for global governance and we'll have under the leadership of, of Gordon Brown as the next chair of the G20 here in London in April, a major occasion to keep that leadership for Europe and for uh, the rest of the world, working especially with our American uh, partners and friends. So I really believe that if we uh, work together, we can make this crisis an opportunity because it is in times of crisis that uh, we can uh, make people accept some higher level of change. And so we, uh, there, we can use this crisis to one, uh, with one stone kick to, to uh, kill two birds, if I may use that expression. Again! The politics. Le moment où tout le monde aura compris qu'il était temps de changer, temps de donner un nouveau visage à la mondialisation, temps de construire un nouvel ordre mondial, politique, économique, social, assis sur de nouveaux principes et de nouvelles règles. <rire> and the hope that each of us has to build a new world order in which nations and peoples with different systems and different values can live together in peace, respecting one another while disagreeing with one another. Alrighty then. President Bush uh, said that the New World Order was uh, in, 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 in tune and that's what they were working for. The UN is part of that government. They're working right now very significantly for a North American Union. That's why there's a lot of people in Washington that don't care too much about our borders. They have a philosophic belief that national sovereignty is not important. It's also the reason I have made very strong suggestion that we need not be in the United Nations for our national security. And today, as a pilgrim of, path, of peace, I have come here to pay homage to Mahatma Gandhi, hero of humanity. Mahatma Gandhi told that if all men and women, whatever the differences between them, cling to the truth with respect for the unique dignity of every human being. A new world order, a civilization of love can be achieved. Nere, fidati di lui, la forza vivificante della sua luce ti incoraggia ad impegnarti nell'edificazione di un nuovo ordine mondiale fondato su giusti rapporti etici ed economici. Quit your jibber jabber! Of course, we Americans are going to have to yield up some of our sovereignty. That's going to be, to many, a bitter pill. It will take a lot of courage, a lot of faith, a lot of persuasion, 
to them to come along with us on this necessity. Our forefathers believed that the closer the laws are to the people, the better. Cities legislate on local matters, of course. States make decisions on the matters within their borders. And the national government deals with issues that transcend the states, such as interstate commerce, foreign relations. That's what we mean by federalism. Today, we must develop federal structures on a global level to deal with world problems. We need a system of enforceable world law, a democratic federal world government. You know, what Alexander Hamilton wrote about the need for law among the 13 states applies today to the approximately 200 sovereignties in our global village, all of which are going to have to be convinced to give up some of that sovereignty to the better, greater union. Hamilton said, and it's not going to be easy, Hamilton said, to look for a continuation of harmony between a number of independent, unconnected sovereignties in the same neighborhood would be to disregard the uniform course of human events and to set at defiance the accumulated experience of ages. Most important, we should sign and ratify the Treaty for a Permanent International Criminal Court. That is now at the core of the World Federalist Movement's drive. That court will enable, enable the world to hold individuals accountable for their crimes against humanity. Their leader, Pat Robertson, has written in a book a few years ago that we should have a world government, but only when the Messiah arrives. <laughs> he wrote, and literally, any attempt to achieve world order before that time must be the work of the devil. Well, join me. I'm, I'm glad to sit here at the right hand of Satan. <laughs> Let us hear the peal of a new international liberty bell that calls us all to the creation of a system of enforceable world law in which the universal desire for peace can place its hope and its prayers. Thank you. We would like to bring you a message from the First Lady of the United States, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Good evening and congratulations, Walter, on receiving the World Federalist Association's Global Governance Award. For more